Okay, we should be live already. And this is where we want to invite our friends. <laughs> uh, but that was a very, very interesting chat uh, much earlier. I think we move on with so many <laughs> topics in just a very short period of time. Yeah, man. I can I can't imagine uh, if we, if we put all of us uh, into a chat room together, uh, that would actually be quite fun. But I think it yeah. might be very chaotic as well. Um, but I think there will be a lot of uh, interesting perspectives that we understand or learn from one another. Mm, mm. And 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 we are learning from each other in in the sense because as we throw out uh, information and sharing, there may be some things that we don't know yet. Yep. So. Sure. Yeah, so I'm also seeing if there's uh if it's already online here. We are at ten o'clock. All right, fantastic. Uh, we do have some some friends who have just joined us, uh, and I'm making sure that we have other my other friends who are on the watch party uh, can also see this. Um, so for those of you who are with us, uh, don't be shy. Don't be strangers. Say hi in the comments, and uh, we'd like to call out to you. Uh, we like to recognize you because it's a Saturday morning uh, where you can actually just chill and do nothing, but you're here with us on a coffee uh, and a very casual conversation, especially on something work-related. Um, so kudos to you. Right? I have it, a very, it, very special guest. It's fun about work. Oh, yes. Uh, today's session is definitely going to be fun about work. I, I like this topic a lot. And uh, thankfully, I find I found someone who is very, very passionate about this topic. Uh, and through text, uh, if you don't already know, through text <laughs> itself, I could also feel that energy and that, that excitement <laughs> about yeah. this particular topic. Uh, yeah, and for those of you who just joined us without knowing what this topic is about, uh, it's two things that we want to cover. Uh, we're going to cover work work-related cultures and also relationship and how you can really cultivate great ones at work. Uh, so we have Wesley saying hi. Hi, Wesley. And uh, Siti Zulaika saying hi as well. Very hi, on Siti. time. Yep, yep. <laughs> okay, uh, so without further ado, uh, I we want to make this uh, short and simple and we're going to jump straight into it as well. Uh, so we, we want to get uh, everyone to also know uh, who this guest speaker of mine is. Uh, Bhavani, would you mind to introduce yourself? Hi, uh, good morning, everyone. It's a, it's a nice day, actually. Not too sunny, not too um, cold, in fact. Um, I'm a speaker. I also coach. And I used to work um, with organizations, companies previously. So I do have work experience, in case you're wondering how I can speak about work culture when I'm doing my own business right now. So yes, once upon a time, I was a 9 to 5 staff. So I think that pretty much sums up about um, me. I'll share more in the conversations coming soon. For sure, for sure. And uh, how, how have you been, you know, uh, especially during this period of time, uh, we have been like working from home for eight, oh. nine, maybe 10 weeks already. <laughs> I've been awesome, actually. It's um, kind of kind of enjoying it. Um, I think it's, um, this is my personal uh, view. I think it's a much needed break where I get to uh, just take a break, not you know, rush around with the, you know, the daily uh, jam, uh, traffic, finding parking. So it's really been um, a good time to connect with myself. I do things for myself, by myself, um, and just getting a lot of things done that has been postponed for way too long. So if you ask me, yes, um, I truly... I, I dislike the circumstances, but I truly appreciate the time that I've had for myself. Right. And and how has it impacted you professionally, like, you know, in your in your work basis? Has um, it I been helpful? We, um, I think there are many, many angles to this. Um, like many, and, and I think you, you can understand this as well, um, classroom sessions, face-to-face -face session has been totally zero uh, um, for the last uh, two two months plus at least. So in that sense, um, yes, impacted uh, a lot of uh, sessions, workshops, has been postponed, conference, speaking engagements, um, all that has been either cancelled or postponed, still not, uh, some not even definite whether it's going to happen or not. So in mm -hmm. some circumstances, um, 
that has been impacted. But having said that, some things have gone virtual as well. So uh, you you win some, you lose some kind of a situation right now. Yeah, yeah, uh, I, I can totally relate to that. Uh, so for those of you here, uh, if you are not in the training industry, uh, it is going to be, it's difficult for a lot of people. So I, I wouldn't say that, you know, one is better than the other. I think there's always yeah. uh, two sides of the coin. Uh, yeah. While working at home can be fun, uh, if you're working at home, not by choice, that removes the fun <laughs> yeah and i i think this is something that you can't blanket and say it's good or bad because um everyone has their own circumstances their own um, situations that they need to handle so it could be ideal to many it could be not ideal to to many um so sure. i can't blanket and say who's right who's wrong or who should feel this way who should feel that way everyone has their own unique um experience this two months i think yeah, I, I, I totally agree with that. Um, so we're going to go quickly and, and see, you know, if any of our friends who just newly joined us, please mm -hmm. say hi in the comments uh, because we really want to know uh, if you're here with us. Uh, and, you know, just just say hi, you know, let us know that you're here so that we can also recognize you. And uh, we can give you a shout out as well, uh, just to appreciate that you are here with us on a Saturday morning. Today, we're going to talk about the two uh, popular topics, which is the the work culture and also relationships uh, that we can build at work. And I'm going to go straight into like, you know, our, the first thing that I really want to ask about, you know, is challenges in building a culture, especially you've been working before, you notice uh, a great culture. And now that you go out, you also see a difference. So what are the challenges in building a great culture or a happy workplace? Okay, um, I'm going to share based on my experience working before. Um, the places that I went to work, the culture was already existing. Um, I, I've worked at a toxic culture and I've also worked at a culture where I loved working there. I, I've been at two, um, way two different um, extremes. <laughs> and, and here's the thing I observe, the cultures were there when I went and the culture was still there when I left. Same culture, no changes. <laughs> Um, so, how did they get created? Um, my only answer is human. <laughs> Who else creates and defines culture, you see? So, it's definitely created by human, uh, lived in and experienced by humans too. Um, who mm. can change it? It's humans too. So, this is my experience about uh, culture overall. Um, but is it possible for culture to change? I believe so. It's, it's doable. I strongly believe in that. Yeah. Uh, and, and there was a saying, you know, uh, when I was working back in a, in a corporate consulting firm, uh, there's always a saying that you no know, culture is only set by leadership. If, the, if it's like that, then uh, we've got no choice. Now, is that statement true? Or can someone at even, you know, at the lower levels do something about it? Okay. Um, I think this is something that varies by organization and organization size you may say um let's say leaders have a culture that they set but when it cascades down right it could be a different culture mm. why because mm -hmm. the top level um, may not be so involved in the day-to-day -day at, at this bottom level so the culture yeah. may not have cascaded and again i'm i'm speaking on a very general basis this could be different in many many organizations in many different ways um it, it could also be the opposite um, leadership could could not um, maybe have a ideal or good culture but among colleagues the people they have a, a different cohesiveness they are they are living in a different culture so i've i've mm. um, i won't say i've experienced but i've heard of um this kind of cultures because certain group of people come together and say you know what this is how we want to be like-minded people get together and they build a sense of community or sense of uh, yes. belonging within them um, but well, it may not happen at the higher level so you you see there's a lot of differences in all this in um, various levels oh yes yes uh and, and i can totally relate with that because what you have just described is uh, one of my working experience where uh we couldn't we there is a culture built in an organization itself and uh 
on general, it's really good. It's just that when it comes to certain areas uh, where you can't really feel it, and mm. hence a group of us, you know, uh, I was working with a team, we came together and we say, you know what, we want to have this team culture among ourselves where mm. we are open, we are sharing, and we are just dishing things out. And everyone agrees, and we started our own team culture uh, yes. versus the organization culture itself. And what we realized is that uh, it was more fun uh, within us because we kept it among us. And mm. other people start coming in and ask the other members, hey, uh, what are you guys doing? Like, you know, you guys uh, seem to have so, so fun. Jeffro, so here's the thing. Um, sometimes, right, this is infectious. So um, it, it could be like this, you know, you and your group of uh, friends or teammates, you you are this, you know, bubbly, happy very exciting kind of the people and yeah. everyone else and looks and say i i think i want to be part of that and now <laughs> that, that, that um maybe infectious is the wrong word to use currently but, uh, you get what i mean it's it's um, yes it's contagious in that way yeah correct it's contagious in that way um it, it could also be the other extreme um mm. a toxic culture could be so strong um even someone who is bubbly and all comes in and there's no other like-minded people people may get sucked into this. It, it, it's infectious in a different way. Oh, so which it, is contagious. Um, it could be both ways, you see. Um, it's, that's why culture is something that's very interesting if, if you ask me. Um, and it's interesting how um, I, I've asked some people before, I said, you know, you are this bubbly and all, but at work, you're not like this, like no one else. Who wants to be like that it's a struggle to do that all the time so just just um just join the flock and just be just be normal just be neutral because i'm excited all by myself and no one else is excited <laughs> so i'm oh, excited outside the office but inside the office i'm i'm like this so that also yeah. happens and again I'm, I'm generalizing i'm not talking specific that everywhere it's like that but yes. it happens it happens yeah and and I uh and and I have the perfect example uh for someone who's really bubbly, mm -hmm. but then when it comes to work, they are like all serious and all very prim and proper. Uh, I particularly found this very true uh, mm -hmm. among the new auditors. So in the old auditing line, traditionally you will always mm -hmm. see them all professional, um, all very serious, all very uh, stern. Uh, but the new age people are not like that. Oh, people, fresh grads, they come in, they're with energy, they want to make a difference, they want to make things right, automate and stuff. And what happens is they come to work, quiet, serious, <laughs> out of work, wild animal. <laughs> yeah. Um, so it's interesting when you start observing people, um, there are many observations that you can do actually when you go down and just look at this particularly on its own. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yep. And, and you mentioned about toxic culture earlier, uh, which leads me to, to one thought, because I know toxicity doesn't happen overnight. Like, you know, mm -hmm. you put, bring in someone and immediately everyone becomes toxic. It builds up um, over time itself. Uh, but in your opinion, how does a toxic culture forms? Like what are the, like, you know, the symptoms or the signs that this is going to be a toxic culture? going to be or, or um, anywhere that, that tells us like you know uh it, it's gonna be bad because if it if it doesn't form overnight typically yeah. when people realize it's bad it's already too late okay for me um when i speak with people my biggest clue will be whether they're excited to go to work um after a weekend or a long break <laughs> you know my last job i couldn't wait to go back to work wow I, I always look forward to Mondays because I'm energized at work, you see. I love being at home, um, but I was also energized at, at work. So I really, um, Monday blues stopped existing for me. Mm, but mm. I realized a lot of people like, I, it's Monday again. Oh God, I need to go back to office. <laughs> oh God, I need to see um, this person. Oh, I need to see my boss. So I think that is my first clue about um, how... Um, even if you're not over excited, but at least if you don't mind getting back to work, I think that also speaks about how you feel at uh, being in the office. For mm, me, that's mm. that's um, <laughs> that's how I uh, look at it. How how excited are people to get to work? 
which is which is actually very true because when when someone is excited about work, it, it tells you a lot about what's happening there without you needing to pry further. And if someone says, you know, I can't wait to go back to work to get doing this or to be with the people that I'm with, then automatically it tells me, oh, wow, that's a really good place to work at. You probably would be having fun. Yep. And no matter how um, how uh, insignificant or how, I won't say low level, but no matter what your job description is, you feel that you are a big part of the success of the company. Mm. I, I, let me give you an example, Jeff Rose. Um, when I started working in this company, where I was very happy, I started as a program consultant. So right. it's coordination, doing reports, um, you know, arranging timetable, making sure that the training materials are ready, all, all these kind of things. So whenever we get good feedback from client and, um, you know, you get repeat sales, um, I'll always get so excited and I'll go and tell my trainer, uh, brothers, I call them, I say, hey guys, this is awesome. And um, you know what they'll do? They'll turn around and say, this, this would not be possible without you. And I'll say, um, sorry? You, you guys are the hero, you know. You guys are the one that went and did the training. Um, and, and we got this review and they said, um, no, if you have not prepared the way that you have prepared, if you have not done all the groundwork for us, we could not have effectively done our, our training and delivery. And now you see, suddenly I feel that, wow, even though I was not the trainer of the day, but I made a big impact in this whole success of the company. Um, even though my job was just to make sure, you know, training materials were ready, clients were ready, reports were done, but I never got to see the participants or the client. Mm. But my colleagues, my bosses made the operations team feel that we were always appreciated. And it was always something that is a known fact. Operations is crucial and it's a big part of the whole organization. So knowing that, can you imagine the motivation we feel? And remember, oh, we are yes. the ones sitting at, uh, not sitting at home, we are the ones sitting in the office getting all these things done. Um, for me, the trainers are the heroes of the day because, you know, they are there delivering and impacting clients, changing lives. Um, but but um, my colleague buddies, my brothers will always come and say, no, this would not have been possible if the operations did not back us up. So this is where the, um, the culture of appreciation, I found, has made a big impact uh, for me, definitely in a big way. Because now mm. I'm not just this program consultant sitting and, you know, doing arranging, coordination. Um, I, I felt very important. My role, if I did not do my role right, the company cannot be successful for the success that they claim, you see. Yeah. Um, and yeah. this is when I discovered um, a simple appreciation of what, someone does it it it, it um it, it really blew my mind to know that the company appreciates such um again what i thought was very minor very uh, not a big deal but them verbalizing it to me i tell you how not to feel motivated and go back to work man <laughs> you just can't feel down when someone tells you you are an important part of this company. Wow, I mean, I, I'm get, I'm getting goosebumps because I, ca I can imagine if anyone, uh, especially for those of you here who are tuning, and and you feel that you're oper you're just an operations or you're just an executive or just an admin, you're behind the scenes and you're not the one going outside impacting lives. Uh, I hope that you get this message because even if someone doesn't tell you about it, what you do is so crucial in the whole journey itself because without you the rest couldn't take off right i mean it's like in an airport right you build that whole landing strip no one knows about it people only know the pilot that flies say the flight attendants but if you're the one who's involved in building a landing strip in in uh taking care of the flight controls and stuff uh, from the tower you actually impact more lives in in other ways that people can't imagine Jeffro, if I could, let me just, um, for, for people who are not familiar with the training industry, um, as I moved on, I, I was handling or managing the operations team. Let me, let me just describe what are the big deal things that we were doing to ensure training was smooth. 
uh, printing workbooks, stapler handouts, um, creating, um, you know, prop materials and all that, making sure Magic Colors has ink, stationary boxes all are filled up, um, you know, making sure attendance forms are all on, on, on schedule, feedback forms. Um, this was what the operations team was doing for a training company. You are literally, you know, my team, especially, you know, when we have team buildings and all, you know, we have like 50, 70 boxes of stationaries that we need to make sure is prepared. And, wow. and our trainer brothers will come and say, you know what, guys, if you all didn't do this, the team building would not have gone smoothly as it was. And you will just go like, I, I, I was just looking after the stationary box. But you know, all these small, small things mix up to the bigger things of success of the company. And knowing that you just doing all these operational um, matters is a big deal to the others. So this is how the team is energized because um, the heroes that we always call them, the trainers, they will come back and say, thanks, guys. Without you guys, this would not have been possible. True. So that that is a culture where we thrive, we, we really grow, we prosper because no matter how small, whether it's just tip, you know, doing stapler job of uh, handouts or arranging stationaries, it was a big deal because um, we, we keep being reminded that without what we do, the training would not have been successful. That was a real big uh, motivation. I, I agree, right? And and you you mentioned so many powerful things, uh, you know, appreciation and recognition at workplace as as a great uh, motivator. And uh, the reason why both of us are actually uh, talking about this for those of you here with us is because this leads up to a culture, and you don't have to rely on the one above. You can start it, and yep. when you start it with your peers, they will eventually get into this habit of also telling you the exact same thing that you would love to hear. An appreciation after a hard work or a success or you know maybe out of uh out of kindness that you know you just want to give someone an appreciation it doesn't always have to have an event to it and, and here's the thing so some of my friends sometimes ask me so don't tell me you don't make mistakes so don't tell me your boss never scolds you um yes i i do make mistakes um but here's the thing i don't get scolded but i get feedback Ah. And then let me give you an example. Um, say I say I forgot to uh, prepare something for a client that was supposed to be done. Um, here's an example how um, my, my bosses will speak to me. It's like, thank you so much. I know you put in a lot of effort doing this. Clients were very happy. I, I just would like to highlight this portion was missing. Perhaps you can take note and you know put it into your to-do list or something, so that you know in the future this doesn't happen again. And I'll be like, oh God, how could I do that? And and here I feel bad because I made a mistake, but I was not scolded. Um, it was not like you know in front of everyone, people, someone came and said, how come you didn't do this? And you know it's your job, right? But the way it was told to me, um, what I done was meaningful. I forgot something. Maybe I can do something about it, which is put it into my to-do list, put it in my reminder, mm -hmm. or take note that I missed out something. So getting that feedback was also, um, how would I say, not painful? It's not like, yeah. oh God, I got scolded in front of everyone. I don't know where to put my face. No, it's not that, you see? Yes, um, yes. So yes, it's not that I never made mistakes. I did, I do, did a lot of mistakes. But how We're I got humans. my feedback, how I got the feedback was what um, made me learn that, okay, I made a mistake. So what did I learn from this? What can I do not to make the same mistake again? So another time mm. I probably make another mistake, which is not the same, but a different type of mistake. And again, okay, mistakes happen. I learn from it. So that's the difference. The way um, how communication happens, it, it also... Um, it's also about the culture, how, how you interact, how you communicate, how feedback is given, the tone um, of how the message is, is given. Yes, I'm pretty sure they would have been like, what, how on earth could she have forgotten this? I am sure they would have reached their boiling point. But the fact was that 
they did not express that explicitly to me in that manner but rather they took this manner and said you know what i appreciate all that you did um you know this is what makes us a, a good team um, but i noticed that this was left out could you look into it make sure it doesn't happen again it's, it's really different from someone saying, how could you forget that you know what the clients are going to think about this it's i think the results and outcome of that two different conversations could be very different uh, and, and I, I this, I this is is how um, culture communication relationships within office um, organizations this is how it plays a role and and i'm writing this point and i'm putting it on screen for all of you here who are watching this as well uh, the one tip that I, I've really picked up from here is, you know, you got to find the good in the person first before giving a feedback. You start off appreciate, with a good one. Yeah, appreciate yeah. them for the work that they have done, but tell them that um, these are rooms for improvement. Maybe you left this out. Um, and if it was a severe mistake, help them understand that a severe mistake was done and these are the consequences. You can't run away from that. I'm sure we have a choice to choose how we do or give that feedback. Mm. So very interesting because um, now we're talking like, you know, from a from a perspective of someone who's giving feedback, we can choose to do that, right? And uh, often or not, you know, it could be a major thing. It could be a minor thing. Mm -hmm. um, we can decide how we want to re respond, not react, respond to that. Now, I want to flip the other side from a person who is receiving it. What if you come across um, a situation where someone just bluntly say something without going through this, you know, without saying the, the good side and then just say, hey, how can you miss this thing? It's so important in this uh, presentation and you know how important this presentation is for all of us here. You're putting us at stake and you made this mistake. Now on the receiving side, definitely it's not going to feel good. Now how would this person deal with that, that one <laughs> with a remark um, like that? You see, this is something that I will I will bluntly admit and be honest about it. It's going to vary from the type of um, atmosphere or environment you are at. Um, because you must always remember, we cannot change the people around us. We can only change the way we react and respond. Um, so you can always say thank you for the feedback. Um, I understand I made a mistake. I, I will learn from it. Some people may be able to accept that. Some people just couldn't care less and keep shouting at you again. So this is a very, um, I think it's a very thin line where I cannot predict what would be the response. But I think at the end of the day, we should know if we have done the work that we supposed to do, but mistake did happen, accept it. Know that you made a mistake, learn from it. Um, but if you're going to sit and, and wait and say that, you know what, I did this much, no one appreciates me, mm. um, then my, my um, challenge would be, you know what, why not you start appreciating the people around you? It, it can get infectious, you know, um, that, that, oh, yeah. that um, appreciation disease could spread around. Now, suddenly you see everyone is appreciating one another. So rather than waiting for your boss to come and appreciate you or your superior or your leader, uh, you can start with your peers. That that energy could could uh, spread around. You see, um, and here's where I sometimes hear even my own friends like you know I work late hours. A guy never even bother about me. Never even say a word of thank you. <laughs> yeah, I know I get a salary, but you know what? Is it so difficult to say thank you? And I'm like, have you ever thanked anyone <laughs> around you? Mm. And they're like, um, why must I? Exactly, why must they? You're getting paid a salary, right? It's the same logic. If you think that you don't need to tell people thank you, so then why are you expecting one? So do it. When you do it, then you know what goes around comes around. So yeah, this is uh, a very funny thing that you know whenever someone complains and you know nag or you know just go on and on about how much they do and uh, that person gets uh, attention, I don't get attention. I'll just be curious and I'll just ask simple questions. So what have you been doing? And you know what's a uh, um, Sometimes the irony, and they said, you know, this other person gets attention. Yala, pandai bodek la, this and that. So to me, was was that really bodek? Or was it that that person was pleasant um, and said the thank yous and, you know, greeted people. Hey, hi, good morning, how are you doing? And you never did that. So um, some people get mislabeled bodek very easily. 
just because yes. they're just you know chirpy and you know hey good morning how are you doing hey thank you so much i really really appreciate um so if this person is perceived as body and not appreciate and uh, not uh, exhibiting an appreciative culture then that's also a challenge you see so it's very funny when that's i have right. conversations and like hmm, is this really really toxic can it be changed i think it can be changed uh, but whether you want to also do it or not or are you waiting for others to do you don't want to do it why must i do they like do first that's also <laughs> something that i i sometimes get <laughs> that feedback wow wow that that's a that's a very good thing i i mean especially when you pointed out um you can create a culture using just appreciation and it starts with you and yep. uh, i i hope our viewers here are actually getting that point because it it's so it's so profound okay number one let me give you an, a, a reason for it right number one appreciation is free right so you don't have to come up with extra budget you know extra yep. costing all that saying the words thank you i appreciate you or you made me feel so uh so good all these words are 100% free and they they come from dictionaries of people around you <laughs> you can just say it to others secondly uh, like what bhavani has mentioned when you tell others they feel good uh, you're also encouraging them to tell that to you one day right yeah. of course we we can't control when that happens you. right yeah and to the people around you you know there's this saying i don't know who started it or who said it um i treat the ceo and the janitor the same way Mm, mm yes i i i've heard about it yes yeah, but so i don't recall who said it <laughs> yeah exactly i can't recall who said it but that's the concept um you don't just have to be nice to your colleagues and your superiors you be nice to humans period that that's the message that i'm trying to say here you don't choose who you get to be nice or say thank you to you say thank you to everyone you appreciate mm. people for what work that they have done so here's always a thing i i hear um they're getting paid to do the job right yes i agree they're getting paid to do the job but what harm can come by us appreciating that and 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 this True. also applies out of office um you know you go to the grocery store or restaurants to eat thanking the waiter or waitress um should not be a big deal you don't say that oh they get paid to serve me um some, because i i sometimes get <laughs> feedback they get paid what <laughs> like um yeah but <laughs> so what's wrong in saying thank you to them exactly i this I, is something that um again my just my personal view i for me it's just what's wrong true, simple true. Which, you know what's wrong just saying thank you to them at least they leave the table with a smile I, yeah I, if they don't smile it's okay I think that's the greatest gift that we can give someone, right? Um, like most people always think that we have to give such huge thing, uh, like trainings, uh, gifts, you know, like physical gifts. But one of the best gifts that I've I've always felt is when I can leave someone with a smile on their face, and knowing that I've made their day slightly better than it was before. Ah, uh, Jaffa, um, just just to if I can bring this um, point of view across. Sure. Have you heard of uh, this term called positive reinforcement? Yes. Okay. Yes, um, I have. Let's, let's take children for an example. So I've read the books and I've heard people talk about this. Rather than punishing kids for mistakes that they do, what if we reward them for the things that they've done right? Hmm. Mm. So, yep. for an example, um, I was reading this article. I I can't remember whether it was on LinkedIn or some journal. Um, so this um, psychologist was saying, um, because this parent was complaining, you know, my child leaves the house to play in the garden without telling me, and you know, I have to punish, and the child doesn't seem to learn. So this person suggested, rather than punishing him, why don't you give him something when he tells you? So it encourages him to tell you. So then this person said, isn't it bribery? Say, so what's the difference? The other side, you're punishing. It's also um, it still brings about a mental scar. So it's not really bribery, but you're showing that these are, and it's simple things. You know, if your child is you know six and below or what, um, you know stars that sticker stars and all this. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. You know, <laughs> I used to have that. If you collect ten stars, uh, maybe you get to eat ice cream or. 
we will buy you mac and cheese that you like or I will make a dinner that you like. So now the child is excited and it's always doing the right thing because it's positive reinforcement. Yeah. Um, and yeah. it's, all, it's also, again, going back to language patterns. I know I'm going a bit offshoot here, but it's all about being um, uh, appreciative. Um, you know, when you tell your children, don't do this, the more they do. But when you tell them, uh, do it this way, it's, it's simple things like, don't forget and please remember, which works better. Please remember works better than don't forget. Because yes. it resonates um, and it's, a, it's an emotional thing. So there's the same thing. Um, in the office as well. Positive reinforcements definitely works much better than any negative reinforcements. Yeah, so, and, I, and I can agree with that. Oops. So um, many things that happens in the office can create a, an appreciative culture. Um, happiness mm -hmm. jar, gratitude jar, um, celebrating people. Um, my my, my ex-colleagues, um, one of the favorite things that we used to do, you know, we are a training company. Uh, Post-it notes is in abundance. So we will mm. always get um, um, notes from our colleagues uh, saying, thank you, um, you are awesome. So it's like, you know, we will put it up on all our <laughs> cubicles and no ah. one asked us to do. Bosses didn't say that you must do that. But it's just that we did this um, just to cheer someone up. Um, we, we just did it, you see. Um, it was not told by our boss that you know this is a KPI. This week you must write five thank you post-it notes to your colleagues. No, it, 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 I mean my my colleagues did that for me, and I just did the same for any newcomers after that. Wow! So wow! So much that you can do, you know. To you don't have to go and spend money and do big deals, big things, small post-it notes, and you know, paper, recycled paper does wonders. And you know we will be collecting all this and like, you know, having it in a in a in a special envelope or or whatever. <laughs> so many things that you can do to cultivate such a culture. I I can I can um, stand strong and say because I lived in that culture and I thrived in that culture. I I know it's possible. Um, I would not be so confident in saying this if I only read this in theory. But I lived in it, so I know it's possible. Definitely possible. No, I, you know that, I fully agree on that. You know, the amount of uh, empowerment a person feels just being um, acknowledged that you exist and the mere fact that whatever that you do plays a big role in this company, that empowerment, that feeling that you get is, is huge. It's, it's really huge. Mm -hmm. and, and since we're on this topic, like, you know, uh, mm -hmm. we're talking about empowerment now. Now, for those of you here, if you think wondering, aren't we talking about culture and relationship? Everything that we're talking about relates, relates one way or yeah. the other. Because uh, if you want a culture, a culture is what we do together as a team, and what we want to, what we want everyone else to also follow through. Uh, and the best culture is when you leave the organization, people are still following. Now that you know, you have set a real culture. Uh, and what we have, what we have basically shared about, you know, although it goes around like language, it goes around gifts, appreciation. It's everything in that. And if you do this really well, uh, we don't even need to talk about how to do relationship because it will automatically be a result for you. Uh, and and yeah, I, I love this. And since we're talking about the the area of empowerment right now, which relates to relationship and also culture. Uh, we're now in an era where some are at office, some still can't go back to office. And for those of us who are not at office, we're going to be on video calls or just texting. How do we do uh, empowerment over technologies like this um, or even show uh, appreciation or celebration over that? Because obviously you can't just take a post-it note and put it up here anymore. Um. As much as um, I would say face-to-face -face interactions is the best, uh, let me give you an example of what has happened to me in the last two months. My ex-colleagues, um, people have just been messaging and saying, hey, how are you doing? Is everything all right? Um, you know, if you need to talk or whatever, just, just you know, know that I'm around. And it's nice to know that these people still care, even though we don't work in the same place, we don't 
meet too often but just that simple um hey how are you doing is everything all right how's mco treating you and mm -hmm. a lot of my good close friends know that i'm actually not with my family right now so uh, at least now okay but previously i was separated when the total lockdown was happening so it's that little thing that makes you feel you know what um that I, I don't know how you call it whether that's called sense of belonging or that mm. sense of uh, human connection that you felt like i'm I'm not alone in this world the the sense of bonding and the community yeah. feel yeah so again you don't need your post-it notes you don't need to, to send a thank you cards and all that but use what you have with you write a sincere whatsapp message uh, not one that you copy paste to everyone <laughs> uh, because that i won't say it's so fake but there's no authenticity and there's no um, personalization to it i know these people did not copy paste because whatever that they spoke or whatever they, they shared i know it's about me because they will ask me questions like so are you in pj or are you in pd uh, for instance it's my hometown so i know they did not copy paste this to everyone <laughs> not everyone's hometown is pd as far as i know um not many people are from pd so I know, you see, they took the time to personalize that message to me and not just randomly send that same text to 10 or 15 people. So knowing mm -hmm. that, it's like, oh, this person cares. This person is is engaging with me in a personal manner that, you know, even though we have left uh, the company, but we, we are still connected as humans, you know, we are not... Um, we have still good buddies and knowing that this exists, it just makes your day. How, how bad yeah. can you feel when you know that someone cares about it and they don't have to, you're not working with them, they're not paying your salary or you are not paying them salary. They don't True. have to and they do it. I I guess I, I, can, I can only say this at this point, I'm just blessed that I have this kind of people around me. And it came from that culture that all of us were in. Mm, mm, mm. Wow, wow. I, I I would love to have uh you know experiences like this everywhere I go. And, and not just one or two places, but everywhere I go. And again it comes back to the point that uh if someone else doesn't do it with you, you can also do it uh yourself and start that off. Um it may not be as you know an overnight success uh, and I can guarantee it's definitely not the same for Bhavani as well. That entire yes, culture came because... with everyone doing it. I, I didn't start doing that. Um, a few of my ex-colleagues was the one who did that. But then I thought, you know what? Uh, maybe I should reach out to some friends around me and just see how they are doing. And surprisingly, um, I have this one friend who says, you know what? I'm doing so bad right now. I'm just, I just, you know, because there's no training sessions. It's, it's just so bad right now. But knowing that, you know, you message me and ask me just makes me feel like, Okay, la, never mind la. Um, you know, whatever it is, we will, we will, I will still face this and go with it. And and this person just shared this with me like last week. And I was like, oh, okay, I didn't know my messages did that, you see. But that, that, that's the thing, this is about that chain reaction. If it, it didn't occur to me to do it, but when someone messaged and touched base with me, it occurred to me, you know what, why don't I also touch base, touch base with my friends? Mm, mm. Not not the same friends, but my other group of friends. <laughs> so I think, um, like I started off, it's all human. It can be changed by human. It can be mandated by human. It can be stuck there also by human. So as humans, I think we have a choice how we how we take actions. It's a choice that we have how we do things. Yes, I I fully agree. You know, we we have the choice to do things. And, uh, you know, we're already 40 minutes in. I, I, I can tell oh. you this, this kind of topic for both of us, uh, we can go in for probably hours, yep. right? Half, yep. half a day even. Uh, it's uh, understatement. I didn't see the time. Sorry. <laughs> no, uh, not at all. Because, uh, I, well, I was supposed to ask questions uh, that oh, covers oops. this. And, and we basically just touched base on a lot of things. <laughs> yep. And, and it was re it's really fun to hear different perspectives as well. Uh, and what I want to also know, you know, from our audience here where you're with us uh, for the past 40 minutes or so, or for those of you who have just joined us, say hi. 
uh, but also put in into the comments. What are the questions that you would like to ask or know mm -hmm. more about uh, culture and relationships at workplace? Now, we've covered plenty so far. Uh, for those of you who have missed it, can always watch a replay. But if you just joined us and you have a fresh question or you just want to know um, certain things that we can uh, do at workplace, type them in the comments. Uh, we'll help to address it. Uh, we do have some time. I'm trying not to hit beyond one hour. So we have about uh, maybe 40, another 15 minutes or so. Uh, and I can tell you, I, I have plenty of questions to ask. But I want to know whether you have a question because my questions could be just on my perspective and a collected view. Maybe you have something that it relates to you at your workplace. We can provide some perspective. So it's a casual conversation. Also, if anyone wants to add on with their beautiful experiences, I would love to hear that as well. Yes, yes. Uh, I'm, we I'm want sure to collect stories, you know. <laughs> yeah, I love to hear exciting stories because it's possible. It is, it is. Uh, so we're we're waiting in for you. Please uh, put in your hellos. Please put in your your questions if you have any in this area. Uh, fantastic time to really just uh, talk about it because you know this is a very casual setting. Uh, so for me, I I know Bhavani not too long ago, uh, and ever since you know she has left and December. yeah, very very recent. You know, it's <laughs> yeah. about half half a year or so. But the thing is, we, we kicked off uh, in a sense where I think I like the positiveness and the liveliness when I met her. Uh, it, it was really, really cool. And I think this is also something that, that strikes. Um, if you want to also build a culture where everyone is lively, then you have to also be a lively person. I'm not saying fake it out, but I'm saying put it to an energy where you're comfortable at so that people know that's where I, I want to be. Because if let's say you come in all stressed, all all like just mopey and, and stuff, you know, uh, guess what? People around you may just mirror the exact same thing and everyone's going to be like that. I, Jeffrey, I think I would like to add this because some people tend to ask me these questions. Um, so are you saying that um, I'm always 100% this, this bubbly, optimist person? No, I'm not. I, I do have my down moments. I do have my frustration moments. Um, and I do do you know sometimes go down into uh, uh, snowball uh, effects has also happened to me. Um, but here's the thing that has helped me. Um, in in my journey, I have found people that I know I can reach out to, to just go mm. say you know what I'm feeling down. Um, and these people don't say that okay come let me help you solve your problem, but they just say okay you're feeling down. What do you want to talk about? and just talk about anything under the sun and I'll say, you know what, I feel good now. Thanks for talking rubbish with me. Yeah. So sometimes, right, um, and here's the thing, sometimes people are always thinking that you need to go and solve problem. <laughs> I, I think sometimes we don't need to solve all the problems in the world, but just listening patiently without biases, without um, judging, also already helps another person. So I'm, I'm blessed. I found these people around me that I can just pick up the phone and, you know, just let go and like, oh, OK, I'm good now. I'm ready to yeah. climb back up. Um, and of course, the other thing that really helps me is uh, to find things to be grateful for. Even in the most challenging times, uh, picking up things to be grateful for has helped me. So yes, um, I'm not 100% optimist all the time. I do go down, but I find uh, ways to help me cope. And the ways you cope could be different. How I do it, how you do it, how another person do it, it's totally different. Um, mm -hmm. There's no one way that this is coping mechanism full stop, no. Yeah. You, you resonate differently to different ways of coping. So it could be dancing, um, it could be coloring, um, so many things that people do to you know, just let go and do it. So find one that works with you. Um, because yeah. one common question people ask is, how do you manage stress? How do you manage stress is to first accept and acknowledge that you are stressed. And what can I do about it? Because overworking is not going to help. You're not going to True. solve the problem by <laughs> worrying. Add into it. People have this quota. I need to worry this much, you know, then only life is perfect. <laughs> no, you don't need to. Um, you don't solve anything by being worried. But having said that, taking action is what helps. If you have a problem, you can't solve it. What's next? Who can I go and speak to? Who can give me a perspective? Who can give me an angle? So you see, solving mm. problems is asking for help is not that someone must do something for you. Someone could just perhaps offer perspective or something yeah. that 
triggers something and say, okay, you know what, maybe this is an action that I can do. Um, so be open to ask for help. That would be one thing that I strongly suggest, especially right now. Ask for help and just say, you know what, can I do? That question, rather than, oh, I'm doomed. Ask the question, mm. what can I do after this? What's What are my possibilities? So focus on possibilities and not doomsday. Because, um, again, I'm going to come back to this energy is infectious. It's contagious. <laughs> then it's it is. And seeps into the people around us. <laughs> And, 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 you're, and you're so right on that. Uh, I think asking for help is very important. Um, so for those of you here who are viewing this, uh, one thing for sure is that I'm pretty sure in, in all our friendship, our circles, you would have at least one or two percent that you can trust. Go to them and just, you know, ask them for a time and just say that you want to be heard or you have something to say or you're not feeling well and uh, let, them, let them be your listening and, ear. And don't assume sometimes you just have to tell them, you know what? Um, I just want to talk. I don't need you to solve my problem. Just listen to me. Mm, mm. Because sometimes people are over eager. They, they want to help you. So they go into all kind of modes. So you need to just tell people, you know what? I just want to let go. Can you just listen? I know. I, I have a confession to make as well. Uh, for those of you here, uh, and if you don't, if you haven't known me for a very long time, uh, I used to be someone who, who eagerly want to solve problem, right? So if you have a problem, I'm happy because come, let me solve a problem for you. And, and I realized this, I did it with a, uh, a few close friends and it's two sides of the thing. So like what Bhavani mentioned, don't assume that uh, someone else will just give you a listening ear because tendency, we are, we are all working adults. Uh, we come to a point where we always need to solve a problem. So you, if you're working, you would know this. You never go and, to and a boss. And here's the thing, uh, Afro, um, yes. we, you know, when our good friend comes to us, our intention is we want to help them. It's not yeah. a wrong intention. The intention is good. But how we help is, is, is the question here because we are like, okay, my friend has a problem. How do I help him solve this? How do I help her out of this problem? But all yes. the person wanted was to just, you know, lepas garam kind of a thing. Exactly. And, and I've received questions like this. And, and hence, I, I also can respect different perspective. Um, I was guilty in just jumping into a solution uh, because the other person just said I needed help. So my, in, my internal perception, help means I solve a problem. Yeah. But that person just wanted to be heard. And uh, it was many conversations later that I found out that all my friend wanted was, you know, I just need someone to listen. That, that's yeah. it. I don't need a solution because I know yeah. the solution. Yeah. And it came to me where a few students actually asked me, how do I help someone who is in distress or who is just feeling bad? If you know someone who is feeling really bad, you know, stressed up or not in a mood, just call it out. Tell them, you know, I noticed that you are feeling stressed. I, I noticed that you're unhappy. Do you want to talk about it? And, and that's it. And then we keep quiet. <laughs> and, and I think I have also learned to ask, um, do you need my help to solve this? Or are you taking, are you okay to doing this on your own? Um, mm. I, I learned this in a very difficult way when I learned coaching because coaching, you do not go and solve problems, but you listen more than anything else. So I've learned to now um, listen more than jumping in and uh, solving the world's problem. Um, so sometimes <laughs> when the person has finished everything, I will just say, are you feeling okay? Are you good? Um, or do you want to, you know, go and brainstorm and see how you can solve this? So then they'll say, no lah. I, I'm good now. Now that I've let go of everything, I, I can move on. Then you're like, okay, I've done my job. I've listened. All is well in both ends. So I've learned that as well along the way. Um, we have good intentions, but sometimes the biggest help we can do is just to listen. Oh, yes. Uh, even, at I, workplace, I even at workplace, that's the biggest thing that we can do to for our colleagues. Mm, mm. And, and I think often because people at workplace, uh, they don't get hurt. And, and let me clarify that uh, for those of you here, if, if, you're not, if you're a little bit confused, what do you mean by they're not hurt? You know, a lot of times we're at office and people will, will look at you while you're talking, but they're not listening to what you're saying. They're thinking about something else. So by the time you're, you're done, they're just like, mm, mm, okay, okay. And this happens at home as well, uh, typically with a lot of uh, couples. And the thing is, if you can be with them in that moment and just acknowledge them and listen to what they say, that is a great deal because it doesn't happen always. Yeah. I, yeah. I just remembered something. Um, 
talking about workplace um, culture. Oh, okay. Appreciativeness. Um, here's one other thing. You know, sometimes people don't give feedback or say, you know, I come and suggest nobody wants to listen to me. Um, mm. um, you know what? Why I want to speak up? Nobody even bothers. Uh, here's the thing. And this is an example that I learned from my bosses. I, I sometimes go and say, why not we do it this way? Why must do that way? Why not? You know, this is better why this is easier to do and here's the thing um they will listen and they will say you know i really appreciate your sharing uh, but can i offer you another perspective why we are not doing it that way um, mm. have you thought that if done that way this is the consequences um if it's done this way this is the consequences or um why we made this decision not that we don't appreciate your feedback but at this point we we believe that this would be the right thing to do. It's not that we don't appreciate what you said, um, but it's just that, you know, through experience, I know it takes time on their end to explain that to me, but at least I didn't feel like, yeah, like, I tell so much so nobody listens to me. <laughs> so you see, yes. even though my idea is not taken into a uh, concept, uh, I mean, they didn't implement my idea, but at least I know why, because they had a different reason or a different perspective. And they made me understand that. So that, I think, was something I really appreciated from my bosses because they took the time to tell me why. Why my idea mm. cannot work or why they can't implement my idea. So it could be monetary factor that was into consideration or it could be a perspective that I don't know because as management, they have different things to consider which I may not see. it. So certain yeah. things, they would just say that, you know, um, I can't tell you more um, confidentiality with clients, um, but I need you to understand that at this point, we can't do that. I'm totally okay because I know you hurt me. It's okay you didn't use my idea, but I know you hurt me. That's that's the whole point. So I learned mm. that uh, when you do not um, take up someone's suggestion, it would be good to help them understand why not. It's not that they are wrong. It, they could be right, but you have your own circumstances where you have no choice but to do this. But if they know that you actually heard their idea, but you just cannot do it, I think they don't feel um, as bad. Or at least that was my experience. Or not, yeah. I think, you know, I give so much of ideas. I'm running operations. Of course, I know operations better. But you're I, not talking about my idea. But when I hear their perspective and I go like, yeah, okay, that makes sense. I I didn't see it from that perspective. Or I understand that they hurt, uh, but because of situation, because of um, restrictions, um, things that they need to follow because of client, my idea cannot be used. So I'm like, okay, yeah, I have done my part. It's not my. I mean, it's not that I'm wrong. It's just that they can't do it. So mm -hmm. it's fine. And again, this is also part of uh, that culture where. Um, I know I'm being listened and I understand why um, my contribution was not taken into account. Because can you imagine if you have 10, 20 staff, everyone with different view, you can't implement all. <laughs> but yes, if everyone exactly. understands why a decision was made, what factors were taken into consideration, it makes a big difference. Which is very true. Um, I think the, the, the key point that I picked up from here is, you know, as, as leaders or as uh managers you know if you're if you're leading a team any anyways is to be explicit in the reason of doing something or not doing something it gives people it, like a, a closure it's, it's not even just with leaders even with uh, the mm. colleagues that you work with for an example um i've had colleagues who come and told me you know perhaps you can do it this way um and because i learned from my bosses i'll go back and say um i didn't do it the way that you told me to because um I felt, you know, I think maybe my client would prefer this. So I was just mm. going to give this a try. Um, but you know what? That idea could maybe I use, I could probably use that in a different situation. And I appreciate that feedback because now I have an extra idea on how I manage this situation. So it's, it's just not about um, um, hierarchy where it's you and leader, you and boss or boss. Yeah. And it's also things that we do with our colleagues, uh, people around us and all that. Or not, people will start, I, I'm again just generalizing. Um, you know, I always give advice and this person never even listen. For what I want to tell? <laughs> oh, that's very common. That is very, very common. 
But if you understood why people do ask for opinion, they do not follow because they just wanted to know uh, people's perspective. And it's okay if you tell them that, you know what, I'm asking around, say, about 10 people. Um, and I just wanted you to know that I'm asking around for suggestions. Um, and I will weigh the consideration. People were like, okay, at least I know she has been asking around. And she mm. did what she thought was best. Not like, you know, every time ask and then I tell one thing, never even follow what I say. Do the opposite. But when people understand, people may not feel that way. Yep. And uh, for those of you here who are still with us, we've, we've passed one hour mark, right? Uh, <laughs> one thing that, one thing I want to also encourage you is to not just think about this at the work context. Was there a moment in life at home or at, with your loved ones that something like this happened? Uh, when you say something, the other person don't do, and then you ask, you know, forget lah, I'm not going to say it anymore. Or, you know, is there something that you could do with it? And I like the way uh, Bhavani also mentioned about the way we ask uh, for people's opinion and you have to let them know that you're weighing out options rather than giving them the perspective of i'm, I'm going to take what you do but i, I won't do it anyways <laughs> right so it, it's very important because it's a uh, context setting uh, yeah. when people know what's going to happen they set a different expectation and whether you like it or not everyone uh indirectly sets a certain expectation i, uh, I still and, ask opinions from many people sometimes just because um, there could be perspective that I never thought of. Um, and I will tell them, you know what, I'm asking um, a few people for opinion. Um, and people will understand when you make a decision that is not what you told them to. Because people are not mm. obliged to follow what you see. So that's an yes. understanding and context that you need to make people understand that um, you are looking for ideas. Perhaps you did. And the thing is, we know our situation better, our, our challenges better. So that that um, solving problem advice that you give may not be a right fit, but it could be a right fit in a different perspective. Yes, I, I fully agree. And uh, so we're going to ask uh, the audience again, if there's any other questions that you would like to ask about you know, cultures and uh, re relationship. Uh, also, Siti Zulaika was actually uh, mentioning uh, mobile phone is one of the culprits. Uh, mobile phone took away attention from what I am talking. <laughs> and this leads back to one of our topic earlier, not listening. <laughs> I, I really appreciate when someone, if I'm talking to them and they're doing work on their laptop or if they're doing something on their phone and they actually tell me, you know what, um, I'm listening to you, but I just need to attend to this. I'm okay if they say that to me rather than I'm talking and they just, you know, continue looking mm. at the laptop. Mm. <laughs> but when someone tells me I am listening to what you're saying, but I, I am also doing this, but know that I'm listening to you. The the mere fact that they verbalize that gives me that, that ease of a feeling that, okay, I can continue talking and not knowing, hey, are you listening or not? That, yeah, that yeah, very, very true. Right. So we, we have to be aware on the two-way side, uh, what yeah. we do and what the other person may perceive. Uh, Some people and, are really multitaskers. They could be doing three jobs at the same time. Well, um, I, I respect people like that. <laughs> um, so uh, sometimes it may feel like, are you sincere in listening to me? Trust me, people sometimes are listening where it may seem that they're not. But it is always good to tell them, you know what, I am listening to you. I am not looking at you. I'm looking at my phone, but I am listening to you. People will be at least... Um, feel better, much more better yeah. than, than feeling like I'm Definitely. listening to me and you know, I'm talking here, you know, I'm letting go my emotion. Are you listening to me? You know? <laughs> yeah. So uh, I'll, let, I'll let our audience here know one thing. Uh, at workplace, if can, please avoid doing that because you don't want that to be a culture because once your people think that it's okay, they're going to replicate and they may not replicate 100% what you have, especially your good intention to juggle two things. They may only replicate 60%. And that translates to another person replicating at a 60% of that. And soon you'll have everyone just on their laptops and saying, uh, 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 uh. Mm. And what's worse is don't do this at home at all, especially with your yeah. family, uh, with your significant other, because the other person is very, very sensitive. I mean, um, work is aside, personal is another. <laughs> I, 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 um, I, I got this hard lesson from my nephew. <laughs> He, he's, he's four when he did this. 
he hold my face and said, listen, listen, put the phone away, <laughs> listen. And I, I realized as much as I told him, yes, yes, you can talk, I'm listening. He did not understand that. He, he literally like, listen, I'm talking to you, listen. <laughs> Because oh, so a cute. Four, a four-year-old kid does not understand that you can do something on your phone and you're listening to him at the same time. To him, it doesn't work that way. You either listen or you don't bother. So he oh, took yes. my phone away and he said, listen to me. I'm telling you something. And I, um, I, and I appreciate the fact and whenever I'm with him, we have an agreement. If no I'm with you, I'm 100% with him. Um, and he has to understand that if I need to do work on my phone for a few minutes, he should be okay with that. So that's our buddy agreement right now. Wow. Wow. So whenever I'm with him, I, I put the phone away because um, to respect time with him. And I learned that, you know, I can't do the same how I treat my colleagues and say, you know, I'm listening to you, but I'm, I'm doing this. He's like, no, you choose me or your phone. Yeah, and and that that's so important to to understand that everyone accepts it very differently. It not is communication is two ways. It's not how yeah. you communicate; it's how the other person receives it as well. Yeah, wow! Then, it takes a four years old to tell us that. <laughs> and to kids, there's no um, compromise. It's either me or you're not into me. Which which is you know when we talk about work, I think at sometimes people actually have that. Uh, childlike mentality. I'm not saying childish, but childlike mentality where, hey, you know what? It's it's either me or or not, because uh, it's really precious. It, it, we're gonna do work, and uh, most of the time we are spending uh, together at work. But if you're not gonna give me some time and a dedicated hundred percent, then the meaning to that relationship falters. Yeah, wow. Uh, amazing. Right? We, we covered, yeah, we covered so many things here. Uh, <laughs> uh, all right. So um, we're not going to prolong this any further. We have already uh, we gone, past 11. Yeah, past uh, 11. Uh, definitely more than, than what I have. And, and we've, I think we've shared quite a fair bit. Uh, so I hope this is really useful. Uh, for those of you here uh, with us, I really want to thank you for for just participating here and, and just joining us on this casual conversation. If you found this really, really uh, insightful and helpful for you, just type one in the comments so that we know. And then uh, if you'd like to hear more about it, we would love to share uh, on the next uh, session on this. I think there's so much things that we can actually uh, go on it. Uh, and I, you know, based on what I have to ask, uh, we've covered more, uh, but there are some areas that I think uh, you know, we somewhat covered it, yeah, so I, I wouldn't yeah. want to repeat that. <laughs> uh, Sui mentioned that uh, kids can teach or remind adults a lot of things that we tend to look. Let me just yeah. bring that up. I think that's a very important uh, topic itself. Yep. Right. Uh, I, I learned it. So, I learned it, you know. <laughs> Listen! Okay, yes, I'm listening. <laughs> Uh, so for those of you here, a reminder for all of you, you can have that four-year-old right now with you. Right. Every time that you are with someone else, just tell yourself, listen, <laughs> put your hands there and, and really just help yourself uh, engage with the other person. Um, it helps at workplace. It certainly helps in a relationship. Being, being fully present um, at workplace, I think, and not, not even at workplace, in any conversation, being fully present is, uh, that's the human connection that I think sometimes goes missing with all the gadgets around us. Yep, yep. And uh, yeah, so we, we've come to the end of the segment. Uh, unfortunately, we have to call this end uh, because Bhavadi also has a day. Uh, we would love to chat about it, but uh, yep. you know, I gotta respect your time, uh, her time, and you know, everyone's time uh, that we have. Um, thank you for your participation. And uh, again, if you have learned something valuable, type one in the comments so that we know. Um, also, remember to give this a like, share it out with your friends. Uh, I find this to be really, really insightful. Uh, in fact, I'm gonna. I'm going to spend some time to work on a summary because there's okay. just so many points that we've covered. Imagine I have to actually go go through this. Uh, and yeah, and, and I'm trying to write and put, put things on screen okay. and all that. Uh, we so should that, have that has... a transcriber. <laughs> we should have uh, assigned a transcriber along the way. Uh, so well, that, that has been a fantastic uh, fantastic session uh, with you, Bhavani. Thank you so much for your time. Thanks for calling uh, me. It's, uh, it's a fun <laughs> on a Saturday morning.
Definitely, definitely. Uh, for me, I, I've, I've learned uh, quite a fair bit of perspective and I like uh, some of the things that you've shared, you know, in really bite sized but it's so impactful and it can apply in, in any context at all. Uh, I just, I want to apologize if the session wasn't entirely smooth or if let's say we didn't manage to cover everything else that we want to cover. <laughs> we, we went where the conversation went. Yes. All right, so Siti so Zulaika says uh, thank you to uh, Jeffro and Bamadi. Thank you, Siti. Uh, we're, we're really happy to have you around as well. Um, and for those of you here, we hope to connect with you. Oh, yes. If you'd like to reach out to Bamadi, please, please uh, just reach out to her on Facebook or LinkedIn. Um, she's, I think she's more than happy to you know, say hello with you as well. So drop her a hello. Um, connect with her. Uh, I promise you that you will learn a lot from her. Right, she has a so. lot of so. things to share. <laughs> I, I a whole library of information. <laughs> I, I learned along the way, so I must thank my mentors and gurus who made sure I, I had that opportunity to experience this. <laughs> All right. Um. So if there's nothing else, uh, Suyi says thank you as well. Thank you, Suyi. Thank you, Suyi. All right. Um. So we're we're gonna sign off. Uh. And we wish all of you here a really good and restful weekend. Uh, please rest up and uh, be safe, be healthy. Until then, signing off. Unplug <laughs> if you can. Unplug, Unplug if you can. <laughs> yep. All right. All right. Um, so that's Thank all you. from us. Uh, we're going to sign off. This is Jeffro. That's Bavadi. Have a good day, guys. Bye. Bye-bye. <laughs>